fit in there the whole that time. Perfect, dude. I'll oh put it in gosh. the video. <laughs> I'll like make sure to zoom in on YouTube. <laughs> cool. Okay. What is up guys, Karma Medic here and welcome back to another dose. I'm joined again by Kenji in this video. We're going to be covering the second question from our MMI series. In this video, we want to cover why did you choose this medical school or why are you coming to this university? Okay, so there's a lot of points to go through for this question. Um, but one of the important things that I think you should know is the teaching style of the university. Mm -hmm. So in the UK, if you don't know, medical schools are basically split into two different camps. One is the traditional style of learning, which is where you either do one or two years of lectures, and then you go on to do your clinical years where you're in the hospital or GP mm -hmm. um, for more and more time as the years progress. The other type of learning is PBL or CBL, which stands for problem-based learning or case-based learning. And it's where students mostly have to do independent learning. They go by themselves and do a lot of research and then come back to the classroom and disseminate that information. So you definitely want to know which one your university does. And it's very important to get that right. It's like the minimum you can do to know how it is you're going to be learning over the next five years. Mm -hmm. And you want to make sure that that teaching style is relevant for you. Yeah. Right. So you definitely mentioned like, why do you like this particular type of style? Mm -hmm. So why do you like problem based learning? Why do you like lecture based learning? Um, so for problem based learning, you could say like, I like the way you can uh, kind of specify your learning into something, you know, if you find something really, really interesting, you can go into a bit more depth, you know, with that as well. Yeah. You could say that I enjoy teaching. I like discussing my, you know, my friends. I like teaching them as well. Mm -hmm. um, that's something you could definitely you know, include as well. Yeah. I, I knew that I definitely would not like case-based learning, mm. and so I talked about all the pros of traditional learning or didactic learning. Mm. Um, and yeah, I basically talked about how I really liked um, being taught to, taking that information mm. by myself, and then re-explaining it in my own words, making more notes and things mm. like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And like, it's one of the problems with case-based learning as well is that. Uh, you all have different information, whereas mm -hmm. in lectures you're all given the exact same information and you're that's all at true. the same level. Yeah. So that's something you can say as well. Yeah. One thing you could also say is um, about the university being involved in research. Mm -hmm. So for example, at King's, it's a Ross Group, it's a Ross group University, um, and one of the massive things that King's does is produce really high quality research. Yeah. Um, so in preparation for the uh, interview, I actually memorized uh, like one or two things that the university has really done. Mm -hmm. So for Kings, I think it was like being involved in the discovery of DNA. Yeah. So it'd be really cool just to show them that actually you do know what's going on in the university. You mm -hmm. do know what type of research is you know, being uh, undertaken in the university. Yeah. And that could definitely buy you a few brownie points. Mm -hmm. Actually, I did something similar. I memorized the name of a couple of researchers that I was interested in, mm -hmm. what they were doing research on. And I brought that up in this question saying that, you know, this is something similar to the research I've done in the past and I would love to continue that research at your university. Yeah. Um, and also like notable alumni. Any alumni yeah. you thought were really, really interesting, any work that they did that you could, you know, you could mm -hmm. follow up on? I think Joseph Lister. Was he from here? Uh, was he? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> I'll Google uh, it. For the course of medicine, as you know, you're going to be on placement for a lot of your years, and that's actually where you're going to spend the majority of your time over the course. Mm -hmm. So you want to know a decent amount about those placements. For example, in Bristol, they would assign you to, I believe it was seven different hospitals across the whole of England. So you were really going to get exposed to a wide range of different types of hospitals, ethnic diversities, populations, things like that. So that was going to be very useful there. For Kings, both me and Kenji talked about how it's an extremely cultural and multi... Cultural... What was the first word I said? Cultural. <laughs> Diverse is the first thing I want to say. Cut! <laughs> so both me and Kenji talked about how King's was in central London and so all of the hospitals were going to be very diverse and have a multicultural set of patients in them. Mm. They're also very, very large. Mm -hmm. There's going to be lots of patients to see and learn from. Yep. Different diseases as well. Mm -hmm. uh, loads of different diseases coming around from around the world. Yeah. Uh, different patient demographic really. Yeah, mm. yeah. So that's something really important to know. Know your placements, know what the hospitals are that are affiliated with your university and why you like them, why they're a good fit for you. Mm. One of the things that is really important to know is the different types of uh, support systems. Mm -hmm. So you talk about having like personal tutors and why you think that's really beneficial. Uh, any like kind of welfare support, so like financial welf welfare support, uh, mm -hmm. mental welfare support. Yeah. I think really is important to know like when you do come to university, how you will be supported if you do need it. You yeah. Because everyone, you know, everyone does, you know, sometimes needs a bit of support. Everyone and needs really help at some point. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. And um, yeah, having a personal tutor, I think for me personally, has been amazing. Uh, yeah, that's definitely yeah. something you want to you know, mention. I think. Yeah, Kings, for example, in recent years has made a strong push towards improving mental health. 
Mm -hmm. So I remember at the beginning of last year, they gave us a huge talk about how mm -hmm. much support there is for mental health issues. Oh, yeah. And if you're, you know, if you're struggling financially, emotionally, mentally, mm -hmm. anything like that, you can go talk to someone. There are those infrastructures in place. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, everyone's going to need that at some point in their university career. Mm -hmm. So it's good to know that that's around. Definitely. And even like, you know, when you do become a doctor, mm -hmm. you want to know like what support is available in hospitals. So it always really does apply. Uh, so mentioning now is, yeah, is one of the, the massive points as well. So something that was really important for me when I was applying to, to medical schools was that I would be able to do the dissections myself. So I know some medical schools do prosection, some other medical schools have uh, holograms and like software-based dissection, which I thought was not cool for me, that yeah. I didn't want that, yeah. I wanted to have a cadaver that I would be able to cut into, that I would be able to learn Definitely. from. And that was something that I was really, really looking for. One of my friends is at Plymouth and he does dissection through like holographic learning. Oh, nice. They have a really high tech facility where you know you have like a holographic image of a body that you can open and cut into and everything. Mm. But I just don't think it's the same. And even he tells me that he doesn't learn as well through that. And he learns most of his anatomy through books. Yeah. Um, but I consider being able to cut into a cadaver one of the biggest privileges of attending Kings. Definitely. Uh, it was something very important for me. Me too. I think also like, one of the point you could mention is uh, just to show a bit of your personality and say, I want to go to London because uh, I support Arsenal, uh, Tottenham, you know, whatever team you support <laughs> and say something like that is around the local area that you, just, you know, you're really looking forward to, to enjoy. Nice. Uh, just to add you know, a bit of your personality, something different yeah. um, and say why you actually want to live in that city mm -hmm. you know, and see what they say. Yeah, that's a good point. And like, especially for international students as well, like I was coming from Canada. Mm -hmm. So I also wanted to justify why I was coming to the UK. You know, yeah. I could go study yeah. in one of many cities. Yeah. Basically, London was a really good fit for me because I enjoyed big cities. I enjoyed all the diversity and culture and everything like yeah. that. Yeah, you can talk about how it matches your personality. So exactly. you say I'm a very social person. Yeah. I love meeting different people. Mm -hmm. I love being um, meeting people from different backgrounds, different cultures. Mm -hmm. And that's why London is so you know, amazing for me or whatever reason that you have. Yeah. Speaking about London and meeting people, one of the things that I really hit hard on for mm. King's was that it's such a huge medical school. Oh, yeah. It's, I think, the biggest medical school size in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, so that was very important yeah. for me because, like you said, you know, we're very social people. I love meeting people. I love going out there and you know, uh, experiencing new things. So having a big university, a big class size was very important to me. I didn't want to go somewhere yeah. like Cambridge or Oxford where there's like a smaller class size, smaller mm. tutorials, even one-on-one -on -one teaching. Definitely. Yeah, I wanted to be surrounded by as many people as possible. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point actually. And also just having five different campuses as well. I love how you mm. can you, know, you walk in between campuses, you can see the cities, yeah. and you can meet people you know, from across different campuses. Yeah, yeah. We, we meet people from Strand and Waterloo. Mm. Um, so, you know, you meet people from everywhere. Mm. And aside from your academics, you can also mention that you love sports, you love societies. Um, yeah. So in Birmingham, we had something called MedSoc, which is like a mm. medical uh, society. Yeah. In Kings, we have MSA which is the Medical Students Association. Yeah. Uh, so you could always talk about, you know, like you really want to play football and there's a really, you know, like GKT has the best football team or whatever. Yeah. Uh, GKT you could, people are hardcore <laughs> yeah, for in real. sports. Uh, so you guys mentioned, yeah, I want to play a sport and I'd love to, you know, to be part of the team. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, you love being part of the Harry Potter Society or like, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah, and um, yeah, because I, I guess being part of society is a huge part of university lifestyle. Yeah. And you always talk about how you want to add to the university Definitely. and you know, bring your own character and bring your own um, you know, success as well. Definitely, yeah. Or if there, isn't a, if there isn't a society available, you could always mention that I'd love to start a society. Mm -hmm. Because some of my friends in my last uni started societies. You could always say that you want to start this society even though you don't want to. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you guys can exaggerate the truth a little bit at your interview. A tiny, a tiny bit, yeah. Just a tiny bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so long story short, basically you want to say as many unique things about that university as possible. Um, you can always go for the generic ones, but you know, it's not going to stick with the interviewer. And if you talk about your past, your experiences, your extracurriculars, how those fit in with the university, how much is your personality, that's going to be something that's really important and it's going to hit home with them. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys found these tips useful. If you want to check out Kenji's channel, don't forget to visit him on YouTube, Kenji Tamita Vlogs. Come check me out. Follow us on social media, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, All of that. everything. BBC, yeah. BBC, uh, <laughs> BBC <I> play. <laughs> yeah. MySpace, don't forget. <laughs> I think I still have MySpace. You do? I, I don't know. I need to. I need to be. I've, I've, I've looked at it. I've never made one. Did you not? What do you have? Like Bieber or something? Uh,